So 3D printing isn't the easiest thing to get into. Even though these days the technology is quite simple, you can basically grab a phone, a printer, and just get something off the bed pretty quick. There's still a number of issues you can have, and sometimes being too keen or just jumping straight into it can be one of the biggest problems. But uh, I'm going to go through my five top mistakes that I've made uh, and that I see a lot in 3D printing and how to fix them. So let's jump into it. All right, number one, guys, I've mentioned this before and it's really simple, but level your bed. Now, this isn't the same that you used to do when you got into 3D printing, if around the same time I did, when Enders and you know, Creality Ender 3s were the, the hot topic and everything was going on and things like that. You had to physically get a piece of paper and level out every single corner and edge of your bed. Uh, this was important. You had to level the center, the corners, everything, because if one bit of the bed was off, you wouldn't get the right adhesion. Now, this is still the problem. If part of your bed is off, you're not going to get the right adhesion for your print, and then you're going to get fails. And that could be anything from little layer shifts to, you know, issues that you have throughout the print all the way up to just a massive blowout and the print's not going to work. Now, adhesion was one of the biggest issues I had with my K1 when I got started with those and I had five K1s completely blow out. If you've been in my channel for a while, I've talked about this a little bit, Creality K1 came with a very slick bed. No matter how well you leveled it, it was quite common for adhesion to be an issue and it would blow out. It's probably why they sold it with a glue stick in it, which is the only 3D printing company that I've seen in a long time now that still actually promotes using glue on their beds. But stepping back, we're talking about leveling. So when you want to level your bed these days, most printers, unless you're still using an old Ender 3, in which case, yes, you're going to get the paper, you're going to get the there's thousands of videos on that on YouTube and all over the internet, go and have a look. But if we're just talking about, you know, modern day printers or the newer printers like your A1s, your K1s, anything from bamboo, you don't have to level the bed yourself anymore. You don't have to get a piece of paper and level it out. You're not doing what, you know, I've, I've done it on the Solvols and other printers. You're not actually checking all that anymore. You're not doing, you know, your simple mesh anymore either. What you can do though, every single print, and I recommend every single print, it's even just a setting on the A1 or any of the bamboo printers, if you're using Maker World, you can actually just set to have it level every single time. You are moving that bed on and off to remove prints. Things get on it, it gets dirty. If it goes around and it actually checks, it will compensate. It doesn't mean it has to be perfectly flat, but setting the auto level for that print it will compensate for that print and you will get a nice clean print. So level your bed, guys. Now, back in the day, we would talk about brims and things like that when you're attaching your print. Now, this doesn't just help it to adhere. The, one of the ways that it does that is it actually does let you see in that first layer what you have got going on on the bed. Now, I still recommend this a lot of the time, guys. If you have a big print especially, put a brim on it. Watch that first couple of layers, see that it's level. If it's not working out and you have something dodgy in the corner, take it off and start again. 100%, that's the best move. All right, so mistake number two that I've made a lot is printing too fast. As I said before, you can get into this hobby and you can be so eager to get something awesome like a helmet straight off your printer or something massive like R2D2 or a big droid and you jump straight in. And with printers these days, like the A1 or the Creality K1, they advertise certain speeds. It can print up to 600 MMS and it has a starting speed of the... Cool. Awesome. Doesn't mean you should do that. So yes, the Bamboo Labs can print up to 600 mm, uh, can print up to 600 mms. That's great, and on some of the printers like the P1S, the P1P, and even the X1C, they can certainly do that. 
I have seen the A1 do that. I wouldn't recommend the A1 doing that. And although it's the printer that I do recommend the most, especially if you're just getting into the hobby, it's not what I would recommend doing with it. Do not set it to that speed. I set most of mine to about 400 to 500 MMS. I like to set it to 450 and then I do increase the speed on it by putting it into that mode. What I do is before I put it into ludicrous mode, which puts it at 166%, I actually let a good amount of layers print first. Not, you know, the five, six, seven layers. I like to let at least 10% of the print go first before I then increase that speed. And if it's going to clock out and pass what it's capable of, it's only going to go up to what it can do. If it's capable of that, like on the A1, it will. Now, if you're using a printer like the Creality Ender 3, v3 then i don't recommend they say 250 i don't recommend doing that 140 is my limit on that i don't like going past 140 mms now the problem with going too fast guys it leads to so many issues you're going to get layer shifts you're going to get stringing you're going to get fails where it's just not strong enough because it hasn't actually adhered properly and the whole thing's gonna blow out so to avoid that take the extra couple of hours of printing let it do its job and let it print properly. One, you're going to get a cleaner print. You're going to get a more successful print rate. You're going to become more confident in what you're doing with printing and you're going to have an easier time in post processing. Just take your time. Let the printer do its job and don't push it past its limit. Just because it says it can do a certain speed doesn't mean it should. All right, my third tip guys. Filament. So bad filament storage specifically. I print a lot in my garage and at my old place I printed in a big shed at the back. That meant I just kept my, my filament up on the shelf. Now here I do the same. The garage is a more secure space. So I do have insulation in the garage. It is a dry space. I do feel pretty confident keeping my filament in there. Doesn't mean I keep it forever. Um, do not let your filament go off, and yes, it does go off, that may sound silly, but it does go off, it dries out. When filament dries out, it becomes brittle. So one, keep it in a place where there's not too much moisture. Again, sounds counterproductive, you don't want it to dry out, you don't want it to be moist. That's what we're actually referring to. The filament actually draws in moisture, and that creates a brittality, which actually looks more like drying. And if you have a dryer box, I know it sounds silly, you don't want it to be dry, but you want to dry it out. Put it in a dryer box before your print. So put it in, let it dry properly. It's like a way of curing the filament before you print with it. Now this will save from the filament being too brittle. When the filament's too brittle, it breaks. It doesn't uh, extrude properly. It gets shredded up by the extruder and it blocks up your printer. You don't want this. That's the last thing you want because that means more fixing and cleaning for you and more parts to buy. Stay away from it. Just store your filament somewhere safe and if you can, get a dryer. That's it. My mistake number four, guys, is ignoring my maintenance of my printers. Yes, I talk a lot about fixing my printers. I talk a lot about you know, going in and getting rid of clogs, getting rid of issues. You're leveling things properly, doing all that. That's the basic maintenance we had back in the day. Now that was just actually just keeping your printer going. That's not maintaining the printer. You get little messages and warnings these days of grease your printer, you know, grease the, the axes. Also remember guys, you shouldn't just replace your nozzles when they're broken or when you've had a blowout or replacing the hot end or anything. Look up your printer, look up the recommended time for when you're meant to you know, replace these things. If you're using brass ends, it does recommend every three kilos. I don't, I, I don't believe that. I've had probably a good 200 kilos go through my brass ends, but check them guys, look at them. Look at the way they're extruding. I've just changed mine because I did have some extrusion issues and it was as simple as changing that. So monitor your printers, monitor your parts of your printers and change them when needed. Look them up, look up 
you know, there's so many bits of information on the internet of other people using these things. As I said, A1s, 200 kilos is my limit. Um, so look it up, look what people are saying and trust your gut guys, but look after your printers. The longer you look after the machine, the better the print's gonna be and the more you're gonna love this hobby. My last tip guys, number five, or my mistake I should say, is slicing without calibrating. So we get comfortable, we get files, especially these days, we grab a file offline, we throw it straight on our slicer, we have everything set up and ready to go and we just press slice and print. Now, that works a lot of the time, but there are some prints, especially if you're doing things like helmets and things like that, or things for cosplay and little bits and details, that you need to check what you're printing, guys. Check your supports. Check what you're using as an adhesion, whether you're using a brim or think. Check the temperature. When you're using different filaments, every time you buy or swap to a new filament, check what their recommended temperature is. Yes, it may be PLA, but there could be a five to 10 temperature difference on the PLA you're using compared to the one you used to use or the one you just used. So check that and calibrate for it. Go through all your little steps, check everything guys, learn what they all mean and calibrate for each print because it will save on failures, it will save on wasted prints, and it's gonna save you in the long run on filament. So what might take an extra five or 10 minutes and you know is gonna be a skill to learn is well worth it. So give it a shot. Now that's it from me this week, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this one. It's a quick one. It's just my five mistakes I've made and that I've seen a lot in 3D printing and uh, what they cause and how to fix them. I hope you enjoy this. I hope you love the hobby as much as I do. I will see you in the next one. And I'm asking this week, if you can comment below and let me know what you'd like me to talk about, what you'd like to hear, an experience you've seen that I do, something that I've built, anything guys, throw your questions at me and I'm going to make a video about it. Thank you very much. I will see you in the next one. I'm Tom Foolery. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe.